Thank you for listening today. I so appreciate your faithfulness, beloved, and your devotions to our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, our High Priest forever after the order of Melchizedek, according to Hebrew chapter 7. I've had to record the program again from my virtual world in there.com because I was trying to record the radio again live and every time I try that it seems like the enemy's fighting so much against me. This time it just left out about five minutes of the programs so it just lost air time. just went blank and there it was. So I had to start over. So here I go. This reading is from my serenity journal I call Fragility written in 2017. The journal reading the Lord says, My beloved children, in your weakness is my strength. Your gift of fragility is your sacred treasure, delicate and glowing with brilliant light in my holy presence. You are able to proclaim the presence of the Lord to the watching world simply by walking in childlike trust, going through each day with delight savoring every blessing, focusing on Jesus' Holy Spirit, and glorifying Him in all that you say and do wherever you go. This way, you proclaim His holy presence in all things everywhere, and people see and know that God is within you. Selah. My relationship with my beloved is a rock-solid foundation. As I move on from day to day, His presence will shine brighter and brighter with each step until I step into the next life, even eternity. I have nothing to fear. He will never leave me for even a moment throughout all time. Even though my body is changing daily in spite of my trying to stay young and strong, but this world is not my home. I am a citizen of the kingdom of God. I will not live here indefinitely in this place. Yet I will live forever with my precious Yahweh, my creator, and the lover of my soul. And he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God is my refuge and my strength, a very present help in time of trouble. I will mature gracefully and humbly before Him. I will not let unexpected problems and situations distract me from His presence. I will speak His name when the adversary comes into situations. For this I have Jesus, I have learned to say. Nothing can interrupt my communion with Him. I talk to Him about everything and watch with expectation and confidence to see what he will do. I will continue to practice not letting go of my negative emotions or words until I can lay them down at the cross and leave them there. I am learning to view all difficulties as blessings in disguise. I view this world as the training ground for my character and personality to become like his nature so that I am found qualified and able to live each day in His presence and reign with Him in glory forever. We are His royal priesthood and holy nation, His people who are called by His name. He is our refuge and strength, and I will pour out my heart to Him, trusting Him at all times. I am highly favored and abundantly blessed, as the pastor says from time to time. I will offer up the sacrifice of praise through every difficult circumstance, knowing His ways are not my ways, and His thoughts are not my thoughts. Who can really know Him? His love is unending, unconditional, faithful, devoted, and unfathomable unsearchable. There is no end to love. God is love. A word from the Lord. 
My beloved, I love you. I am with you in sorrow, in pain, and even in your confusion or misunderstanding of my ways or why I do what I do. Just trust me. I have your best interests at heart. I know what will be the outcome of all trials and tests of your faith. Lean heavily upon me in your fragility. I am strong in your weakness and dependency. Don't despair or think for a moment of throwing in the towel, as you have thought to do. Never quit. The enemy would love to get you to quit and turn away. You are only human. Keep your eyes on me and, and on your goal. Don't let the enemy bombard you with negative comments and discouraging words. Resist him. Cast his words far away from you and praise me. As Ephesians 5.19 says, Be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Give thanks always for all things unto God the Father in the name of Jesus Christ. Ephesians 5.19 Do as I have told you. Put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, as it says in Isaiah 61.3. I appoint those who mourn in Zion to give him the beauty of, for ashes and the oil of joy for mourning and the mantle of praise for the spirit of heaviness so that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of Jehovah, that he might be glorified. Keep at it. Keep trying. Exercise your faith and trust. Keep hope alive in your heart. I will help you get back up when you fall. Let quietness and confidence and my joy be your strength. Isaiah 30, 15 In times of trouble, have patience with yourself. You are still growing and becoming ever stronger in the Word and in your faith and trust as you abide in me. Lean on me. I am all you need. I have all the answers. You may not understand, but trust that I will answer your prayers according to my will and what is best for everyone concerned. I will bring your loved ones in. Be patient, therefore. I will send a word to them from my servants here and there, planting seeds of love in their hearts, so they will come and seek after me. I will rescue them and bring their precious souls to me for healing, forgiveness, comfort, and encouragement. I love them far more than you can imagine. I created them, and they are mine. Rest assured in your heart that I hear your every prayer and will bring in your loved ones before it's too late. Time is in my hands and I will help you make good use of yours. Just trust me, lean on me, believe me. Praise continually with thanksgiving in your heart. Stay in an attitude of prayer as much as you can, abiding in and aware of my presence with you. I will fill your spirit with joy unspeakable and full of glory as you go about doing good deeds and following my leading Signs and wonders do follow after the word, after those who believe and trust in me. You may not always be aware of them or see what's happening around you, for it's spiritually discerned. You can't know what goes on in the hearts of those you minister to in my name. Don't feel like nothing is happening for my kingdom because you don't always see the results of your labors. I will use you. I do use you. I speak to you, and I will speak through you. You are my vessel I have created. Let that knowledge be enough to satisfy you and be content. I am here now, and I am always present within you. 
I love you unendingly. I love you, beloved, not because of anything you do or do not do to earn my favor. Nothing you do can change my love for you. You can't earn the gift I have given you, nor ever be able to repay me. My love is full and complete. I am all and in all and through all. My love is unconditional. I am delighted that you strive to serve me more faithfully, to always please me in all you do. I know it's hard for you to grasp the fact that my love for you never changes. People base their love on performance, on deeds done, on love shown. They can turn their love on and off and have it, then lose it, because of a hurt or a fault that they won't let go of. But my love is not like that. I am love, perfect love. I love even the sinner who does not even know who I am. I love the rebellious ones who know of me and still don't follow what they know to do is right. My love is eternal. It's true that there will be many who are separated from me for eternity at the judgment seat, but that is not my choice for them. It isn't because I don't love them. They chose to deny me and my offer of eternal life by accepting me as their Savior and Lord and receiving forgiveness for all their sins at the cross of Calvary. It's a mystery to you, perhaps, to not understand my love for the rebellious. It doesn't give me joy to see that Satan has claimed another soul or find that anyone would worship evil and choose it over holiness. It makes me sad to lose a soul. That they would choose darkness over light is unthinkable. But you, beloved one, have chosen the light and holiness. The spirit that is in you is sealed to the day of judgment, and you are mine. I love you, and I created you for my pleasure. All I ask is for you to return the love that I have given you with an obedient and grateful heart. Go on in your journey seeking my face, seeking to please me, to live a holy life. But don't ever give up because you fail in the flesh and fall. Just get up and say, For this I have Jesus. It doesn't matter how many times you fall and have to come to me for forgiveness. I will never lose patience with you. You are my delight, and I am changing you in your heart and soul, little by little. You may not see any progress, but I see and know. It isn't meant for you to be able to see your position in me, or see your progress every day. Just continue the way you are going. Think of me as often as you can during the day. Stop for a moment and say, I love you, Jesus, or Jesus, help me, or thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you for being here. Any little short prayer that brings your focus back to my presence within you. You are precious to me. I care for you and hear and see everything. Nothing is hidden from me. I know you better than you know yourself. Just rest in my love, in the knowledge that no matter what the enemy does, he is powerless to take you out of my hands. As long as you don't give up and turn away from me and de deny my name, you are mine, and I know you would never do that. It grieves my heart when that happens with someone and I get the blame for what the enemy has done in someone's life and they turn to the darkness and believe the lies rather than coming to me for the truth and comfort for their wounded soul and spirit. Even then I call out. I wait patiently, working in the hearts of those so offended. I would have them see the truth and come to me, but I won't force myself on anyone. I want real love and devotion in sincerity and truth. I did not want robots. 
If love is not real, what good is it? Even angels have a choice to love and worship me or not. Didn't one third of them follow Lucifer into battle against my kingdom and be cast out of heaven into the earth? They had a choice. You yourself would not want love if you had to make a person love you. What kind of love would that be to you? You are created in my likeness. That's why you feel that way. That's the way I feel too. I love you always, unconditionally, forever. Please pray with me. Thank you for helping us, Lord and encouraging our heart. We want to please you in all of our ways. Please help us put a clean heart and a right spirit in us so that what comes out of our mouth is from a clean conscience and a pure heart. Please help us not to trespass against others. We would not offend in word or deed and help us to forgive when others trespass against us, just as you have forgiven our trespasses and offenses, help me never to offend anyone by any word or deed of mine. God forbid that I ever use the sword of the word to hurt anyone, but to use it to encourage and comfort those who are afflicted and those who are in distress or grief or pain that your word may bring healing and comfort to troubled souls and conviction and remorse and repentance to those who need your salvation. Help us to go forth as laborers in the harvest and bring in the sheaves and send forth laborers into your harvest for the fields are white. Help us, Lord, to follow in obedience the example that Jesus set for us. In your most holy name we pray. Amen. This is the end of today's reading. If you'd like to hear this reading again, log in to YouTube by typing in my email address in the search bar, becominglovedfh at gmail.com That's becominglovedfh at gmail.com this is November 7th, Program 36, Fragility. Thank you again for listening and for your prayers. It's a blessing to hear about what God is doing in your lives and reading your email. Please understand if I don't get back to you right away. I do so appreciate your encouragement, and I thank you for your prayers for me and for this program to continue. Please know that the words that the Lord gives me are for His whole body, the body of Christ in all the earth, not for just for me alone, but anyone who will receive them. I hope you can join me again next week. Until then...